three, two. All right, we're live. Doing it live. Here with Sam Mayer, Hannah Newhouse, Dirty Mo Live here on this beautiful day. And uh, how you guys doing? Well, I'm laughing at the fact that it is like 80 degrees here in Charlotte. It's awesome today. Oh, yeah, in February. And you guys are about to head to California tomorrow. And there's going to be a snowstorm. It's a little backwards. It is I'm, a little backwards. I'm, I'm, it's going to be a long weekend, I think. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. How are you, Curlin? I'm good. Yeah. I, just, I just moved here a few weeks ago. So I'm you're, still getting you're adjusted. You're a full-timer. Yeah, full-timer. Oh, wait till I, the pollen hits. It, oh, is it bad? It's bad. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is not good. <laughs> I can always move away, yeah. right? Do this thing <laughs> an option. Really. Just fly in every every Take Thursday to, to do Dirty Mo Live? Yeah. Why yeah. not? Let me know how you get on that program. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will. I will. How is, uh, how is Florida for you guys? It was uh, good. I mean... We'll talk about, yeah, you know, like, how it ended, but... Yeah, I mean, like... <laughs> Like all things considered, it was really good. Like, like the weather was really good. Like all weekend, except for obviously for the truck race, but, right? But it was, uh, it was a good fun weekend. That's for sure. I love speed weeks. It's the best. Yeah, no, it is. Oh, it's speed week now. You know, it's, yeah. uh, it's, uh, we only, we only get so much racing action, but I feel like it's all compact. And you, you, you weren't at the track, were you? No, I was gonna say you say speed week one. I was there okay. for the dirt side of things. So you made it, it is a plural. full two weeks for yeah. us. I mean, we started. The week well before the 500, we did a full week of sprint car racing, modified racing, took a day break, and then came over and had non-wings, late models, big blocks. I mean, it was a full two weeks of racing for us. And the fun thing about dirt racing, though, is we don't um, postpone until like midnight, one o'clock in the morning. Oh. It rains and they're like, mm, that looks like mud. We're canceled for the night. So we were all sitting at the hotel drinking beer, watching the truck race. <laughs> there you go. And it was raining in that one, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it weird, like, once a season starts, I mean, I feel like the, the, we were both talking about schedules before before we went live. It is go time once, it, once you get going. There's not a whole lot of, you know, off time that it seems like once a season starts. Is it, is it good to be back? Do you know the grind that's ahead of you? Yeah, man. I mean, like even for even for the dirt side, like you, you guys run like ninety races or something yeah. crazy. So it's like <laughs> no one stops, and that's that's the best part about racing is like there's always something going on, and it's really good. Like for me on the Xfinity side, we'll be running thirty two more races right now, and uh, I mean obviously that's a pretty full schedule. It's not a Cup schedule quite yet, but I think uh, it definitely keeps my racing side happy. <laughs> Was that a big jump for you though, going from? I mean, you've been in Xfinity for a couple years now. Was that a big jump though from the truck schedule? To the Xfinity schedule, I mean, did it feel more demanding? You know, so like with the ARCA stuff added in there and everything mm -hmm. like that, like I was running 40 races anyway. So yeah. really it was kind of like a step down for my for my first full-time year because it was like I had more off weeks than I really did. And I was running, I was running really less races. Whew. That's like that. It's like that on the late model side too. Like when I ran late models, it was it was forty races, and we were constantly doing something. Whether it was triple headers, double headers, or Wednesday races, we were doing something. Yeah, I don't think people realize that. Like short trackers, honestly, the probably schedule. race more than like you know. People are like, oh, the Cup schedule is so rigorous. It's thirty six weekends or whatever, and it's like short trackers any given year, especially if you live down here in the South, you can start racing at the Red Eye in Florida literally the weekend after new year's yeah yeah and you can race all the way till the derby which is early december and there is a short track every single weekend that you can run i mean you've got short trackers that are pushing over 100 races a year i mean that's in incredible so you know that rigorous <laughs> schedule you got going on <laughs> yeah i think the only thing rigorous about us is the, the travel like going up the right portland, portland eight hour flight that that's the rigorous part other than that the racing's fine is it eight hours it's something like that. Like okay. I'm like, oh, it is yeah. not I don't know eight, if it's eight hours. hours. I feel like it, I well, feel like, like the with the with when we have to stop three times going out for fuel, it, it adds up oh, real quick. Oh yeah. Okay, I was thinking nonstop. So it's yeah. not. I was gonna say like a Charlotte because remember I'm from the West Coast. <laughs> yeah. A Charlotte to like Seattle flight, I think, is like three and a half, four. Right. Yeah, but you like, guys usually stop in like Tulsa, right, and fill up in Tulsa. We'll, we'll stop in Tulsa. We'll stop like I think there was one time where we stopped in Tennessee, Texas, and then Idaho. Like we we, oh, my, we did quick my neck of the woods. Jobs. Nice. People were like, I didn't know this was a state. Why are we landing here? <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time I've ever been to Idaho. Was going to Portland last year. Oh, first time ever. Yeah. And oh, I was only there for thirty ever, yeah. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Great sightseeing. Glad you got to take it all in. Yeah. Literally, it was just a whole lot of nothing. Curlin, you didn't get to go to the five hundred this year. We were talking about it beforehand. Yeah. 
A little bittersweet? I, I mean, I mean, you know what? Some FOMO? Yeah, definitely some FOMO. Actually, my dad was there. So okay. he was texting me all about, you know, what, what was going on, the people he was seeing. And, you know, he kept a good word for me for all the people there that, that I was missing. But uh, I don't know. It was weird. I still felt like the Daytona energy you feel, even though it was from my living room. I think it was just because I was excited. The season's back. It's still an iconic race, whether you're there or not. So... You know, it was it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be, but definitely some FOMO. I get I get the FOMO pretty bad. Yeah, but. I feel like taking it in from the couch via social media it's different. is very different. Yeah. And honestly, it's probably a little bit more of a negative experience. Like just watching everything take place, because man, people on Twitter just love to complain. And this week, this year was about commercials, which we saw right. the statistic laid to bed. Um, yep. but you know, a we'll we can talk about the 500 all day. I feel like we need to revert this back to Sam here. Oh, well, Sammy boy. <laughs> yeah, Daytona. <laughs> hey, so, I want to be in the 500 one day. If we're going to talk about that, I might as well put it out there now. <laughs> okay, all right. we're manifesting yes. here on Dirty Mo Live. You heard it here first. It's perfect. Please. <laughs> Sam, Sam Mayer to the Daytona 500 eventually, right? <laughs> uh, but Daytona, obviously, we, we know how it ended, but how did you feel the day was leading up to those closing laps. I mean, you guys seemed like you were in a pretty good position. Yeah, like, I mean, that was the best speedway race I've put together oh, yeah. in my career. Like, I've led laps pretty much in every one that I've been a part of, but controlling a race for a little bit during that, and, like, I led a lot of laps, that's for sure. And being up front, experiencing it, I mean, obviously, it's a new year, like, right. new team and everything like that in, in this organization. And, I mean, it's always good to have a first race back being really successful and I mean our goal going in was just to be leading at one point on the white flag lap doesn't matter when or where leading at one point I was a nose ahead when I wrecked and we're good that was the goal <laughs> all right so so you're okay with with how how it all went down yeah because you can't do anything about right. it I mean hindsight 2020 there's a couple things that I could have done different or sure. moves that I could have done different or other drivers moves that could have been a little yeah. better um, but I mean, when you get what you get, you can't throw a fit about it. You just got to go and go on to the next one. So walk me, or, go ahead. I say, so we're going to dig into that a little bit more here. You know, you'd mentioned it hindsight 2020. Um, how was Monday here yeah. at the shop? Because everything was great. No, no team meetings were called, no <laughs> conversations, no big, big bosses that showed up to discuss what happened over the weekend. Yeah, we had a um, <laughs> we had a couple conversations. Uh, it wasn't anything you like as in who who had these conversations. Yeah, uh, like the drivers and Dale, uh, we all had like a little call a little bit. Like I think it was Sunday night, so we just talked a little bit about it, like getting everyone's information and just talking a little bit about like what everyone was thinking in the scenario and. It's not like it's bad. Obviously, obviously, it would have been great to have an organ organization win, and uh, that's what me and Kevin Hamlin, my spotter, was really focusing on, especially like with five to go or whatever. Just trying to trying to be methodical about our moves and stuff like that. Obviously, things just don't work out every time, and it, and it's not going to, no matter who you are. But um, yeah, I mean, I was a little disappointed in how it all turned out, especially for us, because I was on my lid half the back straight <laughs> yeah. away. But um, yeah, I mean, it's just part of it, and I'm I'm ready to go to Fontana, have all four cars on the top five on the white flag lap, and ready to go. There you go, recreate it, but just you know, end up in victory lane. That's exactly that, right? right. Yeah. So there was no you know ass chewing, no no yelling at for for any of the drivers in that in that meeting. Yeah, I mean, we definitely got every person's side of the story and we talked right. about it and we learned from it, I think is the biggest thing. Yeah. And I mean, at that point, that's all you can do. You're not going to, you're not going to be upset about something that happened and you can't change it. Like, it's not like we can go to NASCAR and say, Hey, uh, can we redo this? Right. You, you just can't do that. It, like yeah. things happen. You got to learn from it and move on. Yeah. My favorite part about all of this is, uh, this is probably more behind the scenes, but, uh, my best friend is obviously your PR representative. Now this was her first race. First race, and I'm watching this go oh down on Twitter, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. She's going to get to go to Victory Lane yeah. at Daytona in her first race. I close my phone. I open my phone back up five minutes later, and it's like Sam Mayer upside down on the backstretch. And I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, so you you owe her lunch. Yeah, welcome to Daytona. <laughs> Things can happen literally in a click of a button. <laughs> how was, how is, I mean, it looks like a scary, violent flip. How was it, obviously, from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, like, I've taken hits before, especially at speedways, and like going up to the wall, like you really you're you're out of control at that point already because the rear tires are off the ground yeah, already. Nothing you can do. Yeah, and so hitting the wall at that angle, I've never hit on the straightaway before. It was always somewhere oh. in the corner, and 
that was where it was a little different is because I started sinking down in the seat. Like gravity just started going sinking me down. I was like, what the heck? I've never felt that before. And then the car started going up. I was like, oh, that's why. Uh, that makes <laughs> way more sense. Yeah. So by the time I thought about it, I was already skidding on my down. lid. I was just like staring at the sparks in my, sp- my face. I'm like, wow. And what I, goes That's literally mind? all that's I said. It? That's all I said was wow. Did you like verbally say wow? Yep. Literally. <laughs> slow motion. Yeah. Like I think of Talladega huh. Nights, right? Like. Everything's yeah, just not slow gonna... motion. <laughs> oh, it moved so fast, though. Like, really? Like, really. Like, I hit the wall. Really? I started sinking. I was already on my lid by that point. I didn't know. And I was like, wow. And I'm upside down. <laughs> so I'm probably going to get in trouble by someone like David Green for saying this. But, like, my visor, visor was open because I was, like, I was just in full focus mode. So I was, like, staring out, like, clear, clear visor. And I had it open. And the sparks were in my face, like, almost hit my face. I'm like, I should close this. So I close it like no mid rack. No way. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, the yeah, probably, probably, you, probably so. <laughs> a bad idea. Probably a bad idea, but. But the fact that you had the like the thought to be like, oh yeah, I should just like, yeah, you know, I, uh, yeah. there would be so many things going through my mind in that moment. <laughs> like I wouldn't know what to do with myself. But you seemed to was that instinct? You think or like you had? Yeah, a I don't know. I mean, of like. Being in this situation, it's like you don't even have time to be scared about anything like yeah. that. You just have to think. And that was the first thing I thought about other than just saying, wow. Like, <laughs> I mean, not that I'm going to be scared about that because really that that kind of stuff doesn't make, like, give me fear. Um, but, like, I was just like, I, I can't be scared because I'm literally out of control. I'm just just hanging out, yeah. literally hanging out. But <laughs> And I'm glad to see that your car caught i think it caught in the grass right and flipped back yeah. over on you know that, that literally was the worst part of the wreck because really? when when it grabbed in the grass it was like a big jolt oh. and when it landed on all fours like that was that was almost a harder hit than like almost like you compress back in your yeah. seat type oh, of yeah. thing i i was definitely sore from that part uh, for sure interesting. interesting yeah i've never been i mean knock on wood i gotta find so <laughs> I, I uh the chair i've never been in a crash but um yeah, it doesn't sound like it'd be a whole lot. Are you still feeling sore today? I we did a lot of stuff this week to kind of get my muscles relaxed and ready to go. So I'm feeling way better today. Now it's like five days later, but up until about yesterday, I was I was definitely still feeling the burn. <laughs> like how so to get your muscles relaxed? Yeah, well, I did a lot of biking. I do a lot of biking anyway, okay. like indoors, like like 84 degree rooms or whatever, like that. Just not hot, but like <laughs> it's it's warm. Uncomfortable. Yeah. Uncomfortable. Ugh. I think is a good word. And I'm just I'm doing like 45 minute rides just in a nice heated room, and it's like it just loosens everything up. Interesting. I yeah. die on the assault bike for like five minutes, so I can't imagine 85 <laughs> degrees in 45 minutes. Whew. Cardio, not my thing. Oh, really? Oh, it's not my thing either, but I have yeah, to. Yeah, you're do a runner, it. right? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Although I just hurt my Achilles yesterday, so I'm I'm a little bit. Uh, you're an injured I'm runner out for this week. Yeah, I'm an <laughs> injured runner, former runner, I guess you could call it. But um, we had obviously Dale Jr. talked a, a fair amount about Daytona um, on the download this week, and he said that what you guys did. You know, as an owner, he's like, ah, you know, I wish one of our cars won. But he's like, if I was in that situation, I, I probably would have done the same thing. Did he, oh, yeah. did he tell you that? Well, that's a, that's part of the conversation we had is yeah. he he said that he would look at every one of our moves and what we did. And he says, well, if that was me, I would have done the same thing. Right. Now, it's a little worse when there's four of us doing the same <laughs> thing like that. But, um, I mean, yeah, it's like that's why there's no real – you can't like get mad because like as a race car driver you're trying to win for yourself because it's the first race of the year mm-hmm. you want to start out on top like you're in the position to do it especially me like i'm in the position to win and like i can taste it i'm just that first one it's the hardest to get out of the way yeah. and i see it right there i'm like i have to go for it like there's nothing else i can do other if i just sit here i'll finish fourth fifth sixth something like that and i i when i have it right there i'm not going to just Turned down. And, and of course, you would probably go to bed and wake up the next morning with a lot more regret. Oh, yeah. You had just sat still. Definitely. And I, I've had days like that where I woke up, I was like, oh, man, that's the worst. Really? And then I move on to the next one and I do something completely different and it's still wrong. So I was like, <laughs> you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't feel regret because, like, no matter what you do, it's not going to turn out in your favor 100% of the time. You just got to figure it out and learn. What's like the skill luck ratio in your mind when it comes to super speedways? 
you know, like, so, I mean, if you would ask me that two years ago, I would have said, oh, it's all luck. I mean, you, you see all these underdog wins and all that right. kind of stuff. But, like, I mean, it takes a lot of skill and knowledge and understanding of speedway racing to survive that long. Right. Like, now that I've run, I think it was, like, six speedway races now, and I've run up front in a lot of them, and a lot of that's because of the spotter. Like, like, I've had really good spotters throughout my speedway careers. And, I mean, running up front like that, it takes a lot more skill and understanding of speedway racing to stay up there. Like, my first speedway race, I was I was leading, and I led for one lap because I didn't know how to block. And I got freight trained. Gone. And I was like, man, if I was actually understanding how to speedway race, I'd still be out there. But yeah. since I don't understand and I have no skill yet, I'm in the back. Yeah. Like, it takes a lot more skill than a lot of people think. Yeah, definitely. I, I find that that's so interesting. Um you know, Denny Hamlin, obviously, on Action Detrimental, he's like, you can luck your way into one Daytona 500, but not multiple. And uh, I think there's definitely a lot to be said. For there's a lot show. of merit in that, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I mean, he's one of the best to do it that's current right now. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of legendary names that are the best at speedway racing. But right now, there's a lot of really good drivers. And, I mean, there's a lot of good drivers that don't have Daytona 500 wins either. Yeah. Like it's it's a whole nother skill set, and a lot of people don't understand that. Definitely. How's how's the team this year? Obviously, Brandon Jones new to the squad. Yeah, the whole organization is it, it's already tons of fun. Like obviously, obviously Noah was like ninety percent of the fun last year. <laughs> like everyone would agree with that, whether you like it or hate it. But like losing that and the dynamic of the team and the relationship with the drivers being a little different, everyone's kind of everyone's kind of being able to be a different person and have that kind of personality out there because. Noah's not here to just be like, be the be man. The fun guy, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like we could all we can all like do our thing. And I think Brandon, like coming to the team, like he's such a good fit. Like it, it worked out so well the way it did with him coming over here, the when he did and everything like that. I think it's gonna be a really good year for all four cars yet again. Like I we had a record breaking year last year. This year is just gonna be just as good. What I think is so cool about like race teams is that you spend so much time together. Like it's almost like your little family home away from home. People even say they spend more time with their race family than they do their own family. <laughs> I find that interesting. You feel like you, like you can call these people family. Absolutely. I spent, uh, I mean, especially cause like me and Marty and a lot of the guys on my team I've had in years past. I just haven't had the chance to work with them here at junior motorsports. So now I getting that chance kind of working with them again. I mean, I've won 15 races with Marty in the past in Arca. So like, if we can go out there and win five, six races and expand it this year, I mean that put us at twenty wins together. And I think I think that alone shows like how much like having a relationship with someone in racing means for success. Yeah. And when you heard Marty key up for the first time, you know, at Daytona, I mean, <laughs> you'd mentioned it. We saw the success that you had in ARCA, in, you know, over at GMS. And it was so cool when I saw that announcement, I was like, man. It's not that long ago, but that's kind of a throwback, you know, oh, for sure. like those two, those two did some stuff together. Um, you know, was it like riding a bicycle when Marty got on the radio? Was it like gelling again? Or did it take maybe a second to, you know, get used to Marty again? I think the one reason why I wasn't like just hopping right back in, it was because it was at Daytona. Mm. Like it's a whole different dynamic. Yeah. Like it's not short track racing no more. Right. It's like you, you're, you're going in. This is the big leagues. Like it's time to shine. And I mean, my favorite part about having Marty back is I walked into his office the first day, first day back, and it was like we never left each other. It was like, <laughs> how are you doing, man? And we just started talking. I think we were in there for like two hours just getting catching up really about like what we're doing this year and how we're figuring everything out and how we're going to go win races. I love it. I've got one of, some of my first interviews ever like doing on camera stuff was NASCAR home track stuff. And I've got interviews of Sam Mayer winning it. I think Iowa, I think you swept <laughs> Iowa one yeah. weekend and we're eye to eye. Really? I stopped growing. He got a heck of a lot taller. <laughs> Same with Marty. So it's always just funny seeing seeing these kids. They're all still kids. But I'm like, oh, well, that's cool. I mean, I've talked to Marty a lot and Sam, but man, Sam was like 12. <laughs> now you're like 15. A little different, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk Fontana. Are you good with moving on to Fontana yeah, here? Yeah, let's do it. We talked a little bit before the show. Um, before we even get into on-track stuff, I know you're a little nervous about tomorrow's departure plan. Oh, yeah. Because it was supposed to be like a 7.15 flight. Now it's a 6.30 flight. When's the last time by yourself you woke up at 6.30 in the morning? I mean, I wake up at 6 o'clock every day. Oh, okay. so I'm for, just for okay. out, The only thing is, is I'm going to have to wake up at like 5.15. Uh, so okay. that extra 45 minutes, 
I think that's going to be everything. You're going to turn your like multiple alarms every couple minutes. I mean, every morning I set three. Like I wake up, I wake. What are the intervals? I okay, okay. I set more though. All right, this tells you a lot about a person. Okay, it does. All right, it does. This is interesting. My first alarm is for six oh seven. Why? I don't know. That's just it. Yeah, six oh seven. Because it's not six oh five. You get two extra minutes of sleep. But it's not six ten either. So it's all it's it's all it's all thought process. Like uh, six oh seven, six fifteen, and then six six nineteen. You guys are my worst nightmare. Yeah, actually, I I need to change it, but I have a uh, my alarm for every week is set at seven thirty and then seven thirty two. So I, I respect two minutes. That I two minutes. The two minutes is a little bit quick, so I need to change the interval there. But I'm a one good alarm person. What one alarm? What if you up. snooze it? Yeah, I don't snooze it. That's it. When my alarm goes up goes off have you ever missed anything because so are you like the alarm? person where you you click the alarm and you're like jumping out of bed like ready to start the day <laughs> or are you like i, I mean i'm go. definitely a little groggy i wouldn't say i'm a morning person <laughs> but i think i know that like if i do snooze it then we're in trouble and i think i've right. learned that lesson oh. before so it's like okay if my alarm like prime example my alarm this morning was for 7 15 my alarm went off at 7 15 i wasn't physically out of bed but i had my phone and i was laying there and i probably laid there for Five minutes, but I was awake and I was ready to get out of bed. So, like, I know that if I set multiple alarms, we're in we're in some trouble. So, I'm a one alarm girly. Definitely, Micah. Do we have any questions from the YouTube chat? Yes, yes, I've got them coming in right now for Sam. Uh, this first one is from Fast Car Living. Sam, is there uh, a favorite race in your past? Maybe you, if you won, or maybe you didn't, but it's still one of your favorite races. Man, I mean, I've already had, like, I've had the opportunity to run so many races already, so it's hard to pick just one. But, I mean, the first one that really comes to mind would be my first Bristol win mm-hmm. in ARCA. That's a good one. Because, like, I had to work really, really hard for it because I came down pit road like an idiot, leading, and I didn't need to pit. So I had to drive all the way back through the field and then win again. So I really had to win it twice, but it was my first win, so I think that's why it's so memorable. Is that the weekend you also ran the truck race? Uh no, so that was so that was the spring one. The the fall one is also pretty memorable because I had to go back to back in the trucks and I won both of those yeah. on that same night. So, you know, I'm gonna change my answer to that that whole night because I can't just pick that one race. I I think I could go double up. Love some Bristol. A pretty yeah. good day. Yeah, fair to say. Very very yeah. good day. Nice. This next one is uh from Mister Stroker Ace eighty. I think this is a good one. Um, throughout your career, Sam, have you ever had a nickname or should we start workshopping some nicknames <laughs> for you? <laughs> um, no, I, I haven't had really any nicknames that'll stick. Um, so I guess we can start working on that. I mean, there's a lot of people that have a lot of good nicknames, and uh, I'd like to be on the list, I suppose. What? Oh, you, gotta say you would like to you? be on the list. You're like, even if it's a bad nickname, you're like, all right, this is what I've been given. Yeah, I mean, if it sticks and it makes yeah. sense, like, like it's valid. I mean, hey, if I earned it, I earned it. All right. I mean, I guess that's how you have to look at it. That's one thing I love about dirt racing is they have the funniest nicknames for everyone. Mm. It does not matter. Like, there's a guy that races from around here. His name is Jensen Ford, and they call him the car dealership. (laughs) The car dealership, Jensen (laughs) Ford. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and there's a guy that races. I can't remember his first name, but his last name is B-O-O-Z-E, Booze. They call him the liquor store, and I think it's hilarious. Like, we got, like... We need to just get you to a dirt uh, race yeah. sometime. Yeah, exactly. Just, like, even if it's a hobby stock. Just let them. If let it's a hobby stock, do I your thing. <laughs> by the end of the race night, the track PA guy will have a nickname for you. That's and awesome. We don't know what it is, but it'll stick. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, I've only ever won one dirt race in my life, and it was in a legend car like five years ago. After that, I haven't. I really haven't touched dirt racing other than a little bit at Millbridge. I other know some that, people. Yeah, she does. I, I know that. That's why I bring it up. <laughs> yeah, we we, this, we can figure this out. <laughs> I'm, I'm the problem is, is I'm not a good dirt racer. Like I will embarrass myself out there. That's my cannot only be any worse than me. So no nah, you'd be surprised. <laughs> like at Millbridge, I like, literally didn't make I barely made the B main. See, this sounds like some dirty mo content. It, that, we that take would Sam definitely be dirt content. racing. Oh, yeah. Mic him up and everything. You'll I have a nickname so. by the end of that. Yeah. Yeah. The dirt racer. <laughs> 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 oh, boy. Hey. I got a question for you that's coming in from the phones. Uh, 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 If we can go this direction. Sure, yeah. This comes from someone in the building. It says, Andrew, how was your first time at Saeed's? Is that, who is that, Jason? I mean, does that matter? It probably was. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) It was good. Yeah, pick some karaoke songs. What's your go-to karaoke song? (sighs) 
I'm an Eric Church fan, so okay. it was drinking my hand for that night. But what was funny is, I mean, like, we're at a bar. So I, right before I go, I'm like, this goes out to everyone out there drinking. And, like, everyone's drinking, Loose of course. Their mind. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. I got the crowd instantly from that one. Sam, yeah. are you a karaoke -er? No, that would not be good. No? Like, at all. Why? But do you have, like, a song that if you were to karaoke? Like, if you had to. Like, say we bring in a karaoke machine. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> and the that, only way you get on the plane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, there's a, like, I'm, I especially, like, moving down here a couple years ago, I've really gotten in the country, so. Nice. I'd say really anything country, like, that I know and love, that I, I would jam that out. New country or old country? I'd say more new country. Okay. I'm the same. Yeah. yeah. What about you? We're, uh, as far as my karaoke song, or what do I listen to? Uh, both. Yeah, yeah. both. My go-to karaoke is either some Dixie Chicks or okay. some Miranda Lambert, so a little little spicy country. Yeah. Um, but we listen to everything. I mean, we listen to everything from like, you know, 80s and 90s rock to hair bands to old country, new country, pop. I'm not really big into rap. That's kind of where I... I'm not either. Like, yeah. there's some like the pop rap-ish stuff, but like hard rap, that's not really... Really my thing. So even when we were racing, like when I used to race and people would listen to their headphones, Noah always used to have headphones on. I'm like, what are you listening to? And it was always some like rap. And I just couldn't do it. Like it just didn't, it just didn't do it for me. There's definitely a difference. I feel like for like hyping yourself up, you know, before race, but yeah. yeah no, like I, even the gym, like I just can't yeah. do rap at the gym. Yeah. Yeah. So. I like fast songs. Like I can't, I can't, I can't keep up with rap like in my head. Like I can't like think of the words fast enough yeah. to like keep up with <laughs> it. <laughs> but like, like fast, like, like fast songs. Like I can keep up with that more than like, I like the instrumental part more than like the actual words. You like ever, that's, that's what I keep up with. You ever get a song stuck in your head during a race? Uh, especially like Daytona when we're up on the line, like 30 to go, we're just running the to top all the time. It's like there's, there's something I'm always thinking of. Are you like... How often are you talking or, I guess, like, singing without keying the mic up? You ever do that? Yeah. I don't really, like, I more think than, like, actually, yeah, okay. like, verbally say something. Yeah. Because, like, it's like, if I'm going to say something, I'm going to scream it so I can hear myself say it. Because that, like, that's what I get fired up about. It's like, if I can't hear myself, like, I, I, I'll i get verbally upset about, uh, at myself. Like, I have to scream. <laughs> like, if, like, like. <laughs> Like at the race, like at Daytona, I got hung out by someone early, and I, I just screamed at the top of my lungs. I was like, because I wanted to hear myself say it, because I wanted to validize myself. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it, like it didn't make any sense because I was I ended up passing him like five laps later. I was, but I was just so upset I that him. I got hung out. Maybe maybe it was the screaming that that yeah, got you passed him again. Gave me that extra he heard you. Yeah, yeah he heard exactly. You. Yeah, he definitely heard you. There was some sort of tweet I saw years years ago. Um, it, Dale tweeted that during some Martinsville red flag, he was trying to scream at Clint Boyer in the car next to him. He wasn't <laughs> sure if he heard him or not. I thought that was funny. I've done that before, like, too. You have, yeah. have you gotten anyone's attention doing it? Uh, Like, back in the late model stuff, like, I'd be, I mean, obviously, they're a lot more open. So, like, under a red flag, I park next to Ty, and um, I just scream, like, What's your balance? <laughs> like, I just try to talk to him about the race and stuff like that. And he's like, I'm a little free here. And I was like, okay, well, I'll take advantage of that now. <laughs> so you got, you can hear each other. It, not very, not very good. But like you, you, like, you have to scream it. Mm -hmm. Because like if someone, even like five cars back has their motor on, it's like you can't hear it. So I know some people in late model days that would have, you know, channel one, two, three, four. And under red flag, they, if they were <laughs> teammates and they were running the same frequencies, they'd click the channels over and he'd be like, hey. What are you thinking over here? Like, what, what are we thinking on this restart? And people would talk to each other under red flags. Clearly, probably not legal in yeah. NASCAR. No. Plant that. Yeah, they like back when the tandem draft right. stuff, like, I, you would have that all the time. So we brought that up on, on the download, and, uh, and Dale said he probably didn't utilize it as much as he should have, but then he would have been just, like, keying people up, be like, hey, what are you doing after the race? Like, just nothing related to, like, racing It'll at all. It would be like after Martinsville last year. You'd be like, I I'm ready to get a beer after this one. Yeah, back. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How would you use the radio in that situation if you were able to talk to your teammates? Uh, I'd probably try to get in their head. Really? Like, like, like truthfully, like, I'd just say some random like stupid trash Look a little squirrely not out like, there, not bud. Like, yeah, probably, <laughs> some, probably something like that. Or something exactly, like that. Yeah. 
Like, not, like, trash talk where I'm trashing them, but, like, I'll just try to say some stuff to, like, make them overthink. Drive it in there a little harder. Yeah, hey. You're I'm, not hanging it out far enough. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm out breaking you by three car lanes. What do you got there, bud? Yeah, or, like, or, or if you're closing in on them, like, dun Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> just start just key up with the jaw. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd have fun with it. Like, that's uh, what yeah, I Yeah, see, do. I feel like I would, too. But I probably to the point where my privilege would get taken away. Yeah, mine would be <laughs> taken away halfway through. Real the quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me run a scenario by you here, Sam. And this happened actually this past two weeks out at Dirt Car Nationals. Um, they run, obviously, a race receiver that just has race control, yeah. which is pretty common. Um, and someone hacked the frequency for race control and was in turn two at the racetrack with a radio and when the cars would key up to go green, this guy would hack the frequency and start talking to the whole field of drivers. No Can you way. imagine you're at Daytona and he goes, Sam, Sammy boy, you're doing good. <laughs> We're drinking beer for you. And you're going down the back stretch and some fans Dude, talking to you. you know, like that's happened a couple times on the cup side. Like really? where people, I've like, heard that. Where, like, like Kyle Busch at Charlotte. He, stand oh, yeah. People. Yeah. Yeah. Like Kyle Busch at Charlotte, a couple, it had to be like five years ago. Yeah. And like some fan like just got on the same channel somehow. And was like asking about how his tires were and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> Which they knew it was Kyle Bush. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They like purposely did it like on Kyle. Listen, I oh, wish I had that God. opportunity as a media person. I'd be like, hey, what's your strategy? Trying to do a TV hit. What are you thinking <laughs> when you're coming down pit road? And then they're like, Oh, I didn't know I was doing a TV hit. Nope, you're just actually talking yeah. to me. Yeah. <laughs> There's no TV. <laughs> That'd be my luck. Yeah, 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 that would be. Yeah. Micah, do we have any, any Yeah, open yeah, I got another question chat? here uh, for Sam. So Sam, you've got your ride here at Junior Motorsports with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Is there any any older racers or even even Cup guys that you'd like to race against, or you like their style, you'd like to beat, or at least race against? Yeah, man. I mean, being part of the Josh Wise Chevrolet program, like having all those guys in there. I mean, there's twenty something of us now. Like, there's a lot. It's a huge program, and there's I think six Cup guys. So, being a part of that program, obviously, I want to be the best in that program. So, any one of those Cup guys, I always want to be better than. But I mean. Those are some of the best in the business. So it's going to be hard to beat beat those guys one day. But I want to be I, – I just want to be a cup driver. Like, I just want yeah. to be out there and, and race and learn against those guys and eventually try to try to win. Be awesome. Oh, yeah. What's that, what's that program like? That's the workout program, right? Yeah. That you're talking about? Yeah, I mean, it's over at, like, the new GM – Chevy Tech Center. I mean, we're we're I'm over there every day. That's why I'm waking up at six a.m. Got it. <laughs> he is. Got you it. waking up that early? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm, I have to be there by seven. Like everything starts at seven. So like right. I'm always I'm always I'm over there pretty much every day, just trying to get better, working out, trying to get better, learning. And uh, I mean, it's a really good opportunity to do that and be around really good people and uh, be around really good drivers too. That's an interesting dynamic, I feel like, because you're training with your competitors in a sense. You know, yeah. Is it? Is it? Do you guys motivate each other, or you do you look at other people like I want to do more reps than them, I want to run further than them, type of thing? Yeah, I mean, it's motivation. I yeah. mean, you, you know, like any race car driver, or any competitor in any sport wants to be the best. Yeah with the equipment or whatever they're given and be the best on the team. Like you, you hands down want to be better. Like that's the whole reason we compete and have races to begin with. Like that's how this all started 75 years ago is right. everyone wanted to be faster than everyone else. So yeah. like it, that's, that's what it, the core idea is, is I want to be better than everyone else. And obviously it's a lot of work because there's some really stuck guys out there, but that's the fun of it. Yeah. What's your least favorite workout that you do? <laughs> Yeah, man, I I'm not a runner whatsoever. Not a runner. Yeah, and we covered that. It's yeah, it's <laughs> not good for me. I'm just I'm dragging bottom, man. Every time <laughs> it's not very good. So I I don't look forward to the runs over at like Davidson or something like that. I don't yeah. look forward to that. Yeah. How long do you usually run? It like depends. a run to me is from like here to the end of the driveway, yeah. back, but I know runs are actual runs. Yeah, like I mean, with that program, I mean, we do mile one mile warm ups. Like it, it sometimes is really rough. Like especially in the oh, middle, middle of summer. Up? Yeah, yeah. Okay, middle of summer, I could see. Yeah. yeah, like not, not fun. One mile in general is just not it. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, we'll do a mile warm up, and then I think our set will be like two, three miles, and we'll do a mile cool down. These are yeah. in Davidson. Yeah, over at well, the college. Well, keep an eye out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I drive through there every day. You'll, you'll be sitting in the stands eating just, popcorn just watching of, us. Yeah, just yeah. a bunch of, like, mis wait, is it, like, at a track? It's at the Davidson College. Oh, over there okay, there at that yeah. track and field center. Just, like, a bunch of miserable race car drivers <laughs> running yeah. left around the track. I used to like, pass, like, when we used to live in Moores, like, we'd live out in the country, and I would pass, like, Noah and all of them on their bikes. Mm. 
<laughs> all the time. And I, like when McReynolds and all of them would do it too, I'd pass it when biking. Is, is biking still a big thing? Oh yeah, we we do that a lot too. Yeah. I'm I'm a little better at that, but not much better. Hey, if you if you guys ever want to go on a ride, I I ride all alone here. So you need a drafting partner. I need a drafting partner. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> well, I'm not your guy. But <laughs> <laughs> wait, why biking's not your thing? Either? No, not very good. I'd, I'd hold you back. I'd okay. hold you back. That that'd be the rough part. Yeah, yeah. I'm still trying to get as fast as Noah. That that guy holds ass on that. Noah's fast oh, yeah. on the bike. Oh, yeah, he's fast. I, I I've seen him do a lot of the biking stuff. It seems to be he seems to enjoy that. Yeah, I mean he's he's big, so like he gets a lot of momentum down those hills, man. He he goes. Yeah, is he's in the Josh Wise program? Yeah. All right, so you still see him a fair amount, even though he's not in the shop here anymore. Yeah, I mean I will almost see him every day. Still. Yeah. Like I mean, Monday, so is it, Tuesday, does Wednesday, it feel like anything's different? I guess. Honestly, no. Like I I think the biggest dynamic change is just how many people are working out at one time. I mean, there's like six of us in the gym at once. So Dang. I mean, we're we're constantly motivating each other, trying to be better. Like. Raj is in there. He's telling you, telling Noah like he's doing squats or something. And he just tells him, "Hey, lightweight, what are you doing?" Yeah. <laughs> like it's just motivation. Like we're all making fun of each other, but it's all we're all getting better. That's a good atmosphere. I feel oh, yeah. like it's fun. I feel like one of the things that was fun watching, you know, like workout regimen programs. Those have really come into the spotlight in the last couple of years with development programs. And one of the things I always found interesting was a couple of years ago when Toyota introduced uh, combat training. They were having their oh, yeah. kids do like. <laughs> MMA, Taekwondo. Has Josh had made you guys do any? We haven't done that yet, which, I mean. <laughs> no fighting practice. Yeah, no. <laughs> I All I know is that I would not want to go up against Austin Hill, man. That's okay. That, so that's that would be the end of it. you say that? Because Harrison Burton, who was in that MMA program, I asked him about that a few years ago, and he's like, imagine sparring Austin Hill. So <laughs> yeah. he's the same guy that dude, nobody wants to fight. Dude, he's in the program, man. If Josh ever starts that, I, I, I'd be like, oh, I'm feeling sick today. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to miss You're going to miss your three alarms that day yeah yeah <laughs> that, that'd be the one day i do that yeah <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah yeah no i don't think anyone want to fight austin hill endless no. dirty mo content ideas coming <laughs> yeah. today. well well you know we've got that whole you know it's like i guess the running joke of the dirty mo olympics we'll have to add sparring to that maybe tiff's nodding her head so i think we're gonna go with it yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> let's go yeah what a liability <laughs> so this whole tangent i think was about fontana so, yeah. uh, yes. you know, uh, are you looking forward to getting back there? Yeah, I it was really my first it was my first time there last year. Oh, cool. And it was the first time know. we've gone back there. in I think it was two years. So right. it was cool to go back and get the opportunity because originally I didn't think I was going to get the opportunity to race there. Like I thought after oh, COVID, yeah. they were going to redo it to the short track. And it was, I was never going to get the race there. And I was so sad. Cause I yeah. like I've like ever since I started running like in even like the late mile stuff I was like I've always wanted to run Fontana. Yeah. And now I got the opportunity to run it last year and it was it was so worth the wait. I was so was excited fun. to go. Oh yeah, it was the best. Where does it rank then in terms of like tracks you look forward to going to? Dude, I it's easily top three if no not way. if not number two or one for sure. Oh man. I'm so, so sad that it's leaving. So you I'm better so soak it in this week. Oh, I'm taking full of it. I mean, I'm gonna. It's, uh, well, the track can be soaking it in, that's for <laughs> sure. But, but I'm going to get a lot of time to be out there and hang out, so I'm going to take full advantage of it. That was a good dad joke right there. That was a good dad joke. Yeah. That was quality. Yeah. Very, like, very subtle. Like, threw it in there. But, yeah, <laughs> I feel like that track is so – it has so many – unique characteristics about oh, yeah. it like the bumps on the back straightaway you can run the apron it feels like um i mean like how many is it hard zoning in on finding a line there or there's so many options see like it's actually easy to find a line because like if you cross one of those seams i mean those seams are two inches two inches wide like if you cross those you're getting all crossed up you're loose you're tight you're you're something you're not right so like if you get get in a lane getting stay in between the seams that's all you need to do yeah but like it, it, it's that that track is one of a kind because of that characteristic. Like you have to pick a lane, stay there, try to run the best you can. Like your tires are gonna wear out, but you have to go as fast as you can nonstop. Otherwise, you're gonna be in the back. Like yeah. it's just one of those racetracks that's like it's one of a kind. It is. Oh man, now you're I'm, now I'm gonna miss it just to <laughs> talk about it that way. Like I seen everyone like saying like they'd rather have Michigan over Fontana. Right. I'm like, man, that hurts. Like. If you were a race car driver and you and you drove on that track, you would understand why the Fontana is like one of the best. I feel like there's something so classic about Fontana 
and that racetrack, I, it's always it's always around this time of year. I have so many memories of being on spring break and watching that race and and all the classic moments that I feel like we've seen at that racetrack. Maybe, oh, yeah. Hopefully we'll get some a little bit more this weekend. I'd say, well, it's always funny, too, because you hear people say like, oh, I wish I wish we turned Texas into a short track or like right. I wish we turn, <laughs> you know, this other racetrack into a short track. And then we have the one that everyone seems to rave about. Yeah. And it's going to be a short track. I like know. It's yeah. like it's just one of those things that you kind of have to like chuckle at. Because not that, you know, the options available to do that to other racetracks, but the fact that mm -hmm. everyone does thoroughly like running Fontana. Well, like, let's just talk about Atlanta for a second, too. Like, that was, yeah, I, right. that's another track that I got to run the old one before they reconfigured uh -huh. it. And I was so happy about that, too. Like, those old ones were, like, I guess that's the short track driver in me where tires are wearing out. You have to be methodical about where yeah. you're running. Like, that was one of those and racetracks. managing your equipment, oh, it yeah. seems like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, those those are the tracks that appeal to me, so I guess I'm a little biased. But, like, I'm so glad I got to run Old, old Atlanta, too, before the reconfiguration. Now, granted, the reconfiguration is still super cool because I love speedway racing. And it's like a and it speedway fits well. mile and Yeah, it half. does. It fits yeah. well. Um, but So it worked out okay for me. But uh, I'm still sad to see old old little one go. We got the West Coast swing, so we're going to Fontana. Then it's is it it's Vegas, Vegas then, Phoenix. then Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. How, are you gonna stay out there the whole time? No, I. Well, I mean, if we race on Tuesday, I'll probably stay right. out there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I mean, um, we'll come back and forth every time. But like, it's cool to be out on the West Coast. Like the weather's warm. Now. Granted, the weather's warm here now, right now. Right, so yeah, it's a little backwards, but it's always cool to go out there and have that little swing out there. Get it get it done early so we can focus on like out here in the east coast and uh, like the i guess i don't know if that's the midwest what's the the southwest is that where southwest, texas is yeah. and stuff oh, like that well, where, are we, where are we trying are we talking about the west coast thing yeah so well, texas, i mean like texas is midwest is that or, is that like southwest sure. texas is definitely the south like south right yeah like midwest is your, yeah like, yeah you're, that's like, the you're like oklahoma and, yeah, illinois what's Oklahoma? Yeah, isn't that hold, right? hold on. That Wait. ain't Midwest. Yeah, it is, isn't it pretty central? <laughs> yeah, but like that's not the Midwest. I mean, it's if Texas, I mean, it's if Texas Midwest, Midwest, but like but it's Oklahoma, super south. Yeah, Texas is big. Well, I don't like. Listen, Jack. I'm hey, from Idaho. Let's ask the chat. What <laughs> yeah. do you guys think? Actually, there's probably a right answer, so they'll, they'll yeah. tell us. <laughs> We're gonna seem really stupid now. <laughs> I, I just came from Arizona, and it is. It, I mean. Although I'm gonna say the weather out in the West Coast is really nice, and of course it's looking like it's gonna rain yeah, in Montana no. this weekend, but it's a nice time out of the year. And we got Vegas Dirty Mo Ultimate Experience too. We only have a few tickets left. I mean, you got to get your spot there. I'm, I'm speaking <laughs> of FOMO. I, I'm not going. I want to go so bad because I've seen the Dirty Mo Ultimate Experiences in the past, and it looks like a good time. I mean, if you're going to pick a place to do it to, like Vegas, Vegas, yeah, like because it's one of those opportunities to make a full weekend out of it. You go to the racetrack. There's things to do before, after. And like it just that just feels like it walks very well hand in hand. I saw the same video from <laughs> last year of, you know, everyone coming up into the booth. I had some friends that went to it last year as well. And they said it was a riot, but in all the right ways, like a good riot, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> a good yeah. riot. Um, yeah, that's some FOMO too. I agree. And like, I'm not usually super keen on Vegas as far as it's just an exhausting weekend. Yeah. Uh, but like, man, I, I would go to Vegas for a dirty mo experience. Definitely. Well, I mean, if you're over 21, yeah, you can go and have the best time of your life. How old are you now? 19. <sighs> Boy. I still got a year and a half till I can yeah, do Yeah, honestly, <laughs> Vegas isn't fun for you. Yeah, yeah I'm just sitting <laughs> in my room waiting, waiting to like, go to the you racetrack. You can't stand on this carpet. You know? <laughs> oh, that is the most painful thing. Like I know, yeah. Like watching my engineer last year, he was he was out doing something like on the floor. I was like, I was just like, oh, can I go hang out? You I was get like, some oh, binoculars, wait. See what he's yeah, doing. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm just sitting in the restaurant like, oh, what's going on? Oh, that looks fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I I just turned 21 in August. I went to Vegas in. Uh, October and I won thirty cents. Let's go. I'm putting in a dollar, I'm pretty sure. So, but I won the thirty cents. So you so were nice. up thirty cents. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, no dirty mo experience and uh, the Dale Junior Foundation raffling off two tickets. It's with the I want to get this right. The vacation at Dale Junior's package, um, and between now and Sunday, you can bid. It's only ten dollars, and um, who knows? You could you could uh, find yourself in Vegas here in a few weeks. I think it's March. Fifth, so uh, go check that out. Dale Junior Foundation, ten dollar ticket, and uh, you could be hanging out with the whole Dirty Mo crew in Las Vegas. That sounds 
Not bad. That's pretty good. Yeah, I might want to do a liver cleanse before then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And after. <laughs> and and it's like uh, you're with the DBC guys in Vegas. <sighs> So that's an experience. That's a lot. That that alone is an experience. <laughs> <laughs> but then you get the cup race as well. But um, yeah, no, that, that should be cool. And uh, we got some other good Dirty Mo shows. Speed Street with Frank, Frankie Munitz. Uh, he just fresh off that Arca start. And uh, that's pretty cool to see him. Did you see him at the track at all? Uh, yeah. So the Xfinity Garage and the Arca Garage were actually parked like, right next to each other. So yeah. I got to see all the guys out there, the, all the Arca cars. I mean, it was, it was it's cool to see like, I've never run an Arca Speedway race or a truck Speedway race. I went right to Xfinity and <laughs> did that. So I never got to experience like what those guys are like on the Speedway stuff. But, I mean, the racing was pretty good, I think. Yeah. What were you going to say, Hannah? I would say that was just something that I never saw on my bingo card. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Malcolm <laughs> in the middle, like that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, I always knew he raced out at Irwindale. Like that was just kind of something that I knew. But you didn't expect it to maybe go any farther than that. And all of a sudden, they're like, oh, Frankie Muniz doing a full Arca deal. And I was like, wow. <laughs> All right, we are committed. Where did that come from? Yeah, committed. I know. And it was great. Like, I mean, I really like that NASCAR's embraced it. They promoted him, and I know, you know, he was just from, you know, rumblings I'd heard, he was extremely nervous on Saturday for that race. But that's because, like, so much pressure was on him and it had been put on him oh, by all the, the media. media attention? Yeah. 100%. And so, you know, I don't feel like they probably gave him the benefit of the doubt of room to grow of, like, okay, he's starting from scratch. Like, yeah. he's a rookie. Yeah. Regardless, and so that was not on my bingo card, but that is so cool, and that is going to be a really fun story to follow. I have not listened to the Speed Street episode yet, but I heard it was a great conversation. Then Connor Daly also on there. They talked for I think another hour just about his Daytona 500 yeah. experience. So everyone go check that out if you haven't. So, um, yeah, old Connor, <laughs> old Connor had himself a weekend. I know. Yeah. Hey, he made the show though. Yeah, that's, that's what's so important. Cool. Connor Daly and Travis Pastrana in the 500. Again, yeah. bingo Again, bingo card. card. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's exactly it. And Travis leading the lap, too. Yes. Let's talk about that, too. Yes. I First mean, Daytona 500 le leads the lap. That's got to be just, even even if he was coming to pit road and it was green flag cycle, you can forever say you led a lap in Daytona 500. Yep. I think that would be so cool. Were any of you guys, did any of you guys watch Pastrana's stuff when he used to have, like, Nitro Circus on MTV? No, I, I just I watched a little bit of Nitro Circus like like two weeks ago. Okay, literally. so I loved it because like my dad was big into motocross, like we were motocross people, so that was always something to watch. And he had a cousin named Greg that was always on the show, like helping do like these crazy tricks. And when Travis came out here to race Xfinity, Greg wanted to be on the pit crew, so he went through pit crew school, pit <laughs> pit school, all the whole things. Well, by the time he got like certified, approved, and was going to race for the team. Travis quit NASCAR. Oh, no. <laughs> so he stayed, Greg stayed, and actually was on the crew for Chandler Smith, mm. was over at Joe Gibbs, and then was at 2311. And so this last weekend, they got to fulfill the lifelong family dream of Greg actually pitted Travis's car at the 500. That's pretty cool. How cool Full is that? Circle, yeah, though. I thought that was that cool. I read cool. that on Facebook, and I was like, that's probably something that not a lot of people knew, but like he stuck it out, and Travis came back, and they were able to like fulfill that like lifelong dream of. <laughs> Racing in the 500. Travis Pastrana in the 2311 car. Denny, yeah. his owner. Action's detrimental. Yeah. That's a, have you have you guys had a chance to listen to that yet? I have not. Some interesting stuff out of it. Oh, I can only imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Denny's commentary, I mean, everyone wonders, like, what's going through his mind? I mean, he doesn't hold back on that show. Well, I'd say he's perfect to have a show like that. Yeah. Like, he needs a platform like that. Yeah. Because Twitter, Twitter ain't enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Now we have 45 minutes of what Denny Hamlin's tweets would look yeah, like yeah, yeah. as well. He is the reason we have character limits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dale Jr. download three days a week. And, and Hannah, on the wrap-up show, tell us, about, tell us about what you're doing. Yeah, well, this is cool. I mean, uh, you know, we try to figure out. Dale's obviously a huge proponent of short track racing. Right. Loves it. Obviously, he's got the partnership now with the Cars Tour. And, you know, the conversation is always, okay, well, where do you watch short track racing? Like, you know, where, how do we send people? How do we get people to support these short tracks all across the country? Because it's sometimes hard to find that information. And so it's been cool. They're giving me the opportunity to implement this into the download each awesome. week. Just kind of talking about what happened over the weekend in short track racing. And honestly, what's coming up, where you can go watch it. Let's get people out to these short tracks. You know, there are people that listen across the country that probably don't even realize they've a got a track near them or B you know, these big races across all these disciplines of motorsports happen year in and year out. So kind of the, the hope and goal there is to highlight short track racers, highlight what's going on, 
where people can watch streaming, obviously a huge advantage. Yeah. And, you know, you can yep. support your short tracks by streaming, believe right. it or not. Yeah. So, you know, this week we had um, Katie Hedinger. She's going to kind of have some quotes on there. She won down at New Smyrna Speedway during World Series in a pro late model. Only girl to ever win down there. And she's 15 years old. No way. The girl is going to make some make some history. Won at Hickory, too, over the summer. Holy cow. Was the winningest female at Hickory. So she's, she's on a, a very fast track to success. She's teamed up with Anthony Campy Racing, who's a great team in short track racing. They got some good equipment. So... I think when I called her yesterday, she was actually, I could be wrong, testing a Mazda, like those MX-5 road course. So she's taking the steps to diversify her her racing career. So that'll be someone to keep an eye on. That's kind of the whole goal. We want to showcase the names, bring names you yeah. know, to the people that are that are coming up through the ranks where people can watch them. Because I feel like we're at this weird spot where there's a disconnect between some short track racing and the opening levels of NASCAR. You're seeing these kids come into truck racing and you're seeing NASCAR fans go, I've never heard of this kid. And there are people that right. are like, that kid exactly. dominated in the short track ranks. Here's where you can watch him. And that builds strong fan bases for life when you watch someone come up through the ranks. So that's kind of the hopes, the goals. And it's been fun to let me, you know, reimmerse myself in short track racing, but to be able to bring it to this platform. That's so cool. And it's like the name's like, oh, you heard him here first. Yeah, right. Type of thing. Yep. I yep. think that's so cool. No, and it's cool to, I mean... To have a platform like this to be able to promote those kids. I exactly. mean, you know. Dale Jr. Download. Yeah, you know? right. That's one of the biggest listening platforms you can. So to have some of those short trackers get that attention, whether it's someone that listens and says, hey, I want to be a sponsor. You know, that sounds cool. I want to be a part of that. Or, you know, it's not just going to be short track late model racing. We'll definitely highlight the cars tour. But like, you know, my goal is to tell people there's certain big dirt races coming up, you know, super modifieds are coming back into it. Like that's a, a, was a dying sport and has now been revived and that is short track racing. So it's all across the country and the goal is to eventually hopefully have a place to where people can go look, you yeah, know what I mean? whether it's exactly. a graphic or something. Okay. This weekend you can watch this on flow, this on dirt vision, this on racing America. Here's the top five biggest races this weekend at short tracks. It's a good time to be a race fan. It honestly is. Yeah. It's a great time. Micah, we have any, uh, any yeah, additional yeah. questions from YouTube? Just before you guys wrap it up, sure. I just want to leave you on a few nicknames that come through. Oh! oh. 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 These, uh, we, gave, we got some nicknames. Let's hear I asked for it. Uh, Sam the Slugger Mayor. Oh, man. Sam <laughs> Sam the Mayor Mayor, which I like that one. Uh, I like the Sam Mayor the Slayer. Mayor the Mayor Slayer. The Slayer. And Sounds like a cover band. Slamming Sammy. <laughs> And you know what? That's actually like? that's actually been one of my nicknames. Slam and Sammy. Yep. Uh, that was like that was like five years ago. It was actually at New Smyrna. Slam and Sammy. Yep. Through World Series. Yep. That was that was where that one was born. And did you wreck a lot of stuff that weekend? <laughs> well, I had one big one. That's about <laughs> it. But I, that's probably where that came from. I like Slam and Sammy. Although that's kind of one of those things that's like a could be taken as a negative. Uh, I don't know. Yep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's a good place to leave it. Right yeah, there. I agree. This was fun. Thanks, thanks for uh, stopping in. Yeah, this was a blast. I love, I love all the topics we talked about, and then some. We covered a lot. <laughs> we covered a lot, that's and, and sure. you got an early wake up. So, what's what your alarm you... set? Yeah, I, I, I got to figure that out still. I don't okay. know. I mean, it's gonna have to be pretty darn early. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not looking forward to that. Well, uh, I'll be asleep when you wake up tomorrow. Uh, so <laughs> we'll I'll text be, you. Don't worry. But we'll be thinking about you for sure. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, I've been Andrew Curlin, Hannah Newhouse, and uh, Sam the Mayor Mayor. <laughs> <laughs>